destiny on the city on a hill. I have a destiny, and it's not an empty wish, for I know I was born for such a time. God, a God offering of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we welcome you in this place, God. We welcome you, Lord. You are king here. You are the Lord, the God of Israel, the God of our lives, the God of all nations, the God of heaven and earth. And we worship you. We give you back the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 100 commands us, and it says this, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. And praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. And praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Him with resounding symbols. 
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. We give you thanks, Jesus. The sanctuary, praise Him in the mighty heavens, praise Him, all the earth praise Him, praise Him in His awesome power, praise His great and holy name. His great and holy name, praise Him. Praise Him, church. The whole world praise Him. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to the south, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west and the north to the south, from the rising. Of the sun, let his praise be heard from the east to the west and the north. Shout it out! Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything praise the Lord. Let everything. Christ our King, only to you, Lord. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is to be praised. You know, sa tanan nga bagay, dinadayaw ka ginamon. You are the God who owns our very lives. Even the very breath that we take, day after day after day. Say, Lord, we praise you. 
Lord, we remember all the wonderful things you've done in our lives. We praise you and we thank you. The wonderful, mighty things that you will do in the future, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for who you are, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salamat, Gideon. And Lord, as we continue to sing, God, we we just want to sing from our hearts, Lord, and and tell you, Lord, that we surrender our lives to you. Ginang amon kabuhi gino gina ginahalat gina amon sa imo. Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And Lord, we just want to offer our hearts, our lives to you. We just want to tell you this, Lord, that whatever that pleases you, Lord, himuasa amon kapuhi. Here we are. Use our lives Lord, as it pleases you, Lord. Church, I ask you to sing this. Just sing this to the Lord. Just between you and the Lord. Sing this to Him. And just make this your prayer of surrender. Make this your prayer of dedication to the Lord. You are my King. Come take your throne. You're all I need. you to lift your hands like this as we just sing this song one more time as an act of surrender just lift your hands to Jesus you are my king come take your throne you're all I need 
Lord, you alone. There is no way I can make it without you. Lord, use my life as it pleases you. As it pleases you. Yes, just lift your voice. As it pleases you. Lift your hearts to Jesus. All I have, you have given. All I need, you will supply. There is no way I can make it without you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, use my life as it pleases. the cross. 
was finished You were buried in the ground But the grave could not contain you For you were the victor's crown oh, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah You have overcome Must come down. down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. You are the overcomer, Lord. Hallelujah. You have overcome the world. You have overcome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To the Lord God, who is the overcomer, we give our praises and thanksgiving. Your name is Lord Sabaoth. You are our warrior. You are the Lord who is our victory, our banner. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We worship you. We worship you. Amen. Greet the person next to you. Tell them, I miss you. Or we miss you. And welcome to the 10 o'clock service. Before I begin this new series on the will of God, allow me to show you those slides, the first song. Remember that? There you go. I love it. It says, I have a destiny. How many of you believe that? And we are going to talk about that. We are going to talk about the will of God for you and for me and for everybody. Not only that you know you have a destiny, because some people do not know. And that's important. Do you know that you have a destiny? And he says, I know I shall fulfill it. If you don't know your destiny, how can you fulfill your destiny? I have a destiny, and in that city on a hill, I have a destiny. And it's not just an empty wish. It's not what they call a pie in the sky. It's not something that people will just make up. No, this is true. God has given us our destiny. For I know... I was born for such a time as this. Next slide. This one is nice. Long before the ages, you predestined me. Before the world began, God has already predetermined our destiny. And that's how he works. Remember? Remember? Before he makes something, he sees first the end. He knows the end, and he goes back, and then he starts. And so together with him, we discover 
our destiny. To walk in all the works you have prepared for me. You see that? We have a job to do. As we discover God's will, we need to join Him in the journey. I, everything that has already been prepared for us. So we need to be there. Next slide. You have given me a part to play in history to help prepare a bride for eternity. You see that? We all have a role to play. And we need to discover that. You will never be as happy as you can be if you are not in the role that God has given you. If you know where you're supposed to be and you're there, you're the happiest person today. You don't have to grab other people's role. It's yours. You have your own. So we will discover that together. So that you can be happy. You're more efficient. You're more productive. You can imagine you're moving through life and you haven't yet discovered God's call for you. You have a role to play, given to you, very specific, and to help prepare a bride for eternity. Who is the bride? Answer. Hello. Who is the bride? Yeah, we are all the bride. God's people are supposed to be the bride. And we are being prepared. At 2 o'clock today, I will have a wedding. I'm going, tomorrow I will have another wedding. What is happening? Anyway, so we are being prepared as a bride together. I did not choose you, but you have chosen me and appointed me for bearing fruit abundantly. I love that. Appointed me, chosen me to bear fruit abundantly. Not just fruit, but fruit abundantly. Overflowing. That is why you are the happiest if you know your role, if you know your destiny, because you are living exactly where God wants you to be or where God wants you, what God wants you to do. Okay? So beautiful. So let's move now to the will of God, part one. With regards to the will of God or to the call of God, let me say this. Many times... The call that God has placed on our lives is not, say with me, not at all what we would have imagined or planned. True. I never imagined that I would be standing in front of you. This was not part of my plan, but this is God's plan. You see that? The same thing with you sometimes. And so when God calls... We need to listen because no matter what we say, his purposes will always prevail. Do you know that my mother wanted me to be a priest? One time I told him, Kung may asawa ang pare, pwede man. But she cannot answer me, nagpastor ako. Because this is God's call for me, you see? You can never violate God's plan. You see that? And when God calls, you can see that there are people in the Bible who would experience what I would say a surprising call. Sometimes very dramatic. And though this happened to Abraham and it happened to the Apostle Paul, we are going to look into their lives because sometimes it happened to you. The Apostle Paul, we all know that before he came to the Lord, before he got born again, do you know that he had his own personal mission? And what was that? To exterminate the believers, to destroy the Christian faith. That was his personal mission. But after coming to Christ, he became one of the greatest champions of the Christian faith. From a very fearless terrorist, probably we can call him terrorist, to a very fearless champion of the Christian faith. You see what God can do to a man like that? The call of Abraham. He was a pagan. And because he was a pagan, 
he was worshiping the moon. You can imagine. But God again called him. In Acts chapter 7, verse 2, this is what happened. To this he replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared in Greek, Phaneros, to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. That means God suddenly appeared in his glory. He appeared in all of God's glory to Abraham. And then, guess what? He gave him the ministry of Abraham, the message of the gospel. But you see, it happened. The reality of what God told him was realized a thousand years after. Let's look into that. Galatians chapter 3, 8 and 9. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, All nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same faith, same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. You see, when the Lord declared to Abraham a thousand years before that, and he said, I am going to bless all the nations through you. That was surprising. That was unexpected. But the reality of that declaration happened how many years? A thousand years after. So what's the lesson here sometimes? Whatever God is calling you to do, just do it and obey you may not see immediately the fruit of what you're doing. And that's okay. Just be obedient to what he wants you to do. You can't imagine a thousand years before, and then the reality came a thousand years after. So if you cannot understand this, you get disappointed. You might give up. And remember... The couple, Pastor Jerry and Barbara, they were so obedient to their calling when they started this church long ago. And when he retired in 1992, 91, every now and then I would just call him. We didn't have cell phones yet, so I have to do it long distance. I would continually just update him what was happening in the church. And during the time when they left, they retired, the church was just around 150 to 180 people. And every now and then I would update him and I would tell him what was happening and he was happy. But then he died. He never saw the, the fruit of their labor. If they can only see the fruit of their labor, but they were just so obedient to their work. Every time he would ask him, Pastor Jerry, why are you here? He said, you know, for only one thing. We're here just simply to build a church, to put up a church, and that's all. But beyond that, wow, the reality and how the Lord has blessed their work, now we're here. You see that? The same thing for you. If God has called you to do something, just do it. Just do it. Trust and obey because there is no other way. Now, let's look at the pedigree of Paul. Before, he was known as Saul. Before, he experienced the call of God. And, of course, he was en route to Damascus. And he almost had a license to exterminate the Christian faith. He was, a, he was so zealous that he wanted to exterminate the Christian faith. As far as Paul was concerned, it seems like he was so deceived, he thought that by pursuing the Christians, trying to exterminate them or kill them or putting them in prison, he was doing God a favor. But of course, en route to Damascus, something happened. There was a blazing light. He fell from his horse. And then that began the ministry to the Gentiles. We're going to look into that. So for both of them, 
Abraham and Paul, God gave very specific instructions. We heard the instructions to Abraham last Sunday, and now we are going to look into the call of the Apostle Paul. And both of them are very, very specific, very clear. We are going to look into that. But one thing that we can learn, even if it is so clear, sometimes you cannot fully comprehend it, that along the way, you become confused. Along the way, there will be many distractions and you will detour from the very calling of God for you. And it happened to both of them. In fact, it took a while for both of them to really understand God's call on their lives. Now, let's look at Paul. Let's look at his life. Who was he? Philippians 3, 5. He himself described his pedigree. And this is what he said. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Wow. What was he saying? Hebrew of the Hebrews. You know, he was saying pure, pure blood, Hebrew of all Hebrews, no mixture in my family lineage. His parents, Hebrew. His home was Hebrew. His dialect was Hebrew. His dog was, but his coffee was Hebrews. In other words, he was raised to think as a Hebrew. He was raised to honor the rituals and the ceremonies and the customs of the religion of the Hebrews. Wow. Fantastic. And then he said he was a Pharisee. Meaning what? When he said that, he was actually declaring that he was really the top of their denomination, or probably today the general secretary, or the bishop, or probably whatever. In other words, he was more religious than all of them. And not only that, he was a Hebrew boy. He was trained to pray a simple prayer every morning. And this is their prayer. Every Hebrew boy would pray this every morning. God, I thank you that I was born a Jew and not a Gentile. You can imagine, amuna ang training nila. And that's the reason why he grew up hating the Gentiles. And he would look at the Gentiles as dirty, disgusting, uncircumcised, sexually immoral, idol worshippers, and on and on and on. And they were not part of the covenant promises of God. As far as they were concerned, it's only for the Jews. So they would really hate them. They were not supposed to sit in one table. You cannot find a Jew and a Gentile together share a meal in the Puede. And the only time that you can find a Jew and a Gentile was when a Gentile would be employed as a slave to wash the feet of his master the Jew. And so this is the Apostle Paul. The Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee, and this is his orientation. Anyone here close to him? Now let's look at Saul. Before he became Paul, he was Saul. Before surrendering his life to Jesus, boy, he was so zealous to preserve the religion of Judaism. And every time that he would hear that somebody converted to Christianity, he would go on rampage. He would look for them and probably put them in prison. And so, in Acts chapter 8, verse 3, this is what it says. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women and committing them to prison. Now, let's look at the word made havoc in Greek. It's in your notes. Greek means to ravage, to ruin, to destroy, or devastate. It describes people who were mauled to death by an animal that was extremely dangerous. It depicted the devastation left by wild boars that were diseased, vicious, and deadly. 
And so these diseased animals not only destroyed property and livestock, but also maimed and killed people. Wow. And so by using this, the Holy Spirit was trying to tell through the look, through Luke, he said that this is Paul. And this was the kind of Paul that the Lord is going to touch. He was so consumed with hatred. Maximum hatred. That he was acting like a wild animal every time he would see a Gentile. You can't imagine this is happening to a man. And so, let me just have a paraphrase on Acts chapter 8, verse 3, so that we can feel the force of what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. Saul's behavior was so atrocious that everywhere he went, distraction was left in his path. Wow. He acted like a deceased and vicious and deadly wild boars that notoriously attack and mold victims, leaving death and destruction in their path. I mean, you don't want to be near him. In a similar manner, Saul attacked the church and made havoc of it. He raided private homes and forcibly seized men and women and dragged them away so he could see to it that they were locked up in prison. Wow. And then, not only that, he also described himself in another level. He, he just wanted to describe the level of his hatred. And this is what he said in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 13. He said, you know, I thank Christ, Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before, then he describes himself, a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious. What does it mean? Everybody knows what is a blasphemer. But let's look deeply into the real meaning of the word in Greek. Blasphemeo. You know what that means in your notes? To slander, to accuse, or to speak against. It indicates speaking derogatory words now for the purpose of what? Injuring or harming someone's reputation. You can imagine it. And then it says it signifies profane, foul, unclean language or any derogatory speech intended to defame, injure, or harm another's reputation. You can imagine he can do that. So every time he would blaspheme these Christians, he has only one intention, to hurt them, to insult them. Have you ever been near a person like that? I pray that you are not. Can you imagine that the character of the Apostle Paul with all intentions really to hurt the Christians? You can imagine what was going out of his mouth. In Ilonggo, ang muna tawag nita, ano klase dila mo? Matalom ng dila. Shadow kasakit ng dila. Every time you release word, it's so sharp and painful. It reaches your spirit. That's the Apostle Paul. See that? Secondly, he described himself as a persecutor. Remember the Greek word dioko? And it means a professional hunter. So it means to hunt, to chase, or to pursue. In other words, just as a hunter follows the smell and tracks of his prey, the Apostle Paul was on the hunt. He was really looking for them. He was really chasing them down in order to apprehend them, to capture them, and kill them. And thirdly, he said he was injurious, which is the Greek word hobrites. And again, look at how it is being described. One who in pride and insolence deliberately mistreats, deliberately mistreats wrongs and hurts another. And the way he does it, it is so calculated to publicly insult and openly humiliate the person who suffers it. Wow. And not only that, he derives pleasure from inflicting pain on someone else. This is already 
bordering on being a sadist. You love seeing people suffer. You love when you get pleasure seeing people in pain because of what you have done. That was the Apostle Paul. However, in 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, he said, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. And so, wow, you can't think of somebody else doing that, right? But all of that changed in 37 AD with a legal permission to hurt the Christians from the authorities. He was on his way to Damascus to destroy believers, to hunt the believers. And while he was on his way, Jesus appeared in a blinding light. And then here comes the greatest killer of Christians, became the greatest champion for the Christian faith. What's the lesson here? This is what happens usually when God calls you. The surprising call of God when it comes to you. In other words, you can say this. If this can happen to Paul, this can happen to anyone. Amen? I think it's getting warm. Can somebody put on the air con, please? Or I am just in my jacket. In other words, if you know someone... Sometimes we have given up on other people already, correct? Please don't. Don't give up on people. If God did not give up on the Apostle Paul, God will never give up on you or probably on your friends. I'm sure, even me, there were times I would say, No, 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 no. Please don't give up. So please tell the person next to you, don't give up. Don't give up. If Paul can get saved, you can get saved, they can get saved. Amen? You can imagine, the most unlikely candidate for salvation was the Apostle Paul. But God called him. You can't imagine, God can transform this man who hates Christians into somebody who will be a champion for the Christian faith. It could be you. It could be you. You just don't know. Because I know that God has a specific plan for you. And God has a purpose for your life. And all he wants for us is to step in into the journey. Trust and obey. There is no other way. He wants you to understand that he is calling you. He wants you to respond to his call. Sige lang, for now we may not understand. They did not understand at the first place. Paul and Abraham, no. Even for me on a personal basis, I did not. The day that I was born again, I knew something happened inside me, in my spirit. I did not understand why I stood up when Pastor Jerry said, Anyone here who wants to receive the Lord Jesus? Nagtindog lang ko. Uy. I didn't know. But when he said, do you want to receive Jesus? I said, yes. And then after that, something happened in me, but I cannot comprehend everything. I, I, I did not know yet everything about salvation. But one thing I knew, something happened in my heart. So when you minister to people, be patient with them. Especially how we do things sometimes. We, we share the gospel to them, and sometimes we are so quick to just say, Will you receive Jesus into your heart? Alang alang man siyang sling hindi. You know, because you're actually trying to force him sometimes. So, you know, and that's why when we do our missional work today, we spend so much time in building relationship and waiting for the right time and sharing the gospel to them. We are no longer like cowboys like before. Trigger happy. You have Jesus? No, you want to receive? No. So, give them time. It may take time for them to understand. It took time for me to understand everything. But just trust and obey. Because things will fall into place. Sige lang. 
Amat, 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 amat. But in the meantime, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, if we really want to know the will of God, this is the Apostle Paul. Silingia, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In the meantime, if you really want to know the will of God, focus. Focus on the renewing of your mind. And what does it mean? Read the scriptures. Attend a Bible study group. Attend a small group. You know, join a Sunday service like this and continue and continue. And, you know, slowly, every day as you meditate on the Word of God, God will reveal things to you. For me, it took some time. It took some time. Maybe the same thing for you. So be patient with people that you minister. Give them time. But then there's a secret there. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. The world cannot give you anything. Look at what they're doing now, trying to brainwash the minds of this young generation. I was having a wedding in Boracay, and one of the guys there was working in a rehab center in Manila, and he was in charge of administration. And something that he told me, he said, you know, in our center, it's no longer about shabu. It's about young people who want to commit suicide because they have already been brainwashed by the video games. And so, amuna na isla ya, hindi na siya bo. People are so brainwashed already with video games that they want to kill themselves and all of this. So, amuna yang unod sing ilang rehab subong. There it goes. Parents, listen to that. Okay, you have your own children there. If you do that, then he said, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. And his will is good, pleasing, and perfect. John chapter 4, 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. And this is Jesus. And to finish his work. Jesus was just so focused on the will of his Father. And we should also do the same. Because if we are not careful, we are going to be detoured, we are going to be diverted once again, and time is clicking. And before you know it, you're far away, and you haven't done yet what God wants you to do. Now, all of us, we all have our own pauses in life. I mentioned that last week. The pandemic was a two-year pause for us, and we learned many, many things. And in life, in your personal life, sometimes the Lord has to give you a pause. Sometimes it comes in many ways. Like I said, God is so creative. And so remember this. If ever God gives you a pause, take advantage of it. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to see in the life of the Apostle Paul that it also happened to him. Okay? And I also mentioned last week that as we serve the Lord and as we get to know the will of God, everything is a process. Everything is a process. Understanding everything is a process. So give yourself time. Give yourself to give the people that you minister also time to understand. It does not happen overnight. And sometimes, you know, siguro kapoy ka na, we become to, though ginapilit mo na sila. It doesn't work that way. Life is a process. Understanding all of this with God is also a process. So let's look at the case of the Apostle Paul. When he fell from his horse, there was this blinding light. And there was a radical change in his life. Like I said, it will take some time for him to understand this. The transition will take some time. But something happened in his life. And this happened in 37 AD, Acts chapter 9, 3 to 6. And this is what happened. And as he soul journeyed, he was on his way now, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. 
and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Soul, soul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou? What did he say? What did he say? Lord? But wait, wait. He was a pagan. His personal mission was really to exterminate them. And all of a sudden he said, Lord? Okay. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Next. Next slide, please. And he, trembling and astonished, said for the second time, what did he say? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Wow, that was really dramatic. But something that I would like to focus is in verse 5. When he said, Who art thou? Again, who art thou? Lord. Do you know the meaning of Lord in Greek? It means kurios. And kurios in Greek means somebody who is a supreme master. Someone who has absolute control. You know, during their time, they understand the word Lord. Not in our case today. Everybody says, Lord, 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 Lord. But we don't really mean it. You know, we don't really mean it. We don't even understand what it means when we say Lord. But it means somebody who is supreme and who has full control of my life. And this is what the Apostle Paul said. Lord, what was he doing? From being a pagan, or being somebody who hates God, immediately he said, Lord. So he was recognizing the supreme authority of Jesus over his life. And my question to you, when he said that, did he get born again? Was he born again at that moment in time? Romans 10, 9 and 13. That if thou shalt what? Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or that Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, because the Apostle Paul did this and he called the Lord twice, was he saved? The answer is, of course, he was saved. He meant it. He really meant it. He understood the word Lord. Not like us. And so because of that, he called upon the name of the Lord and he was saved. In that moment in time, he recognized the supreme master with absolute authority over his life and soul was born again. Question, did it ever happen to you? For many of you, it already happened. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, there was a point that the Apostle Paul was saying that he was apprehended of Christ Jesus. Let me read. Can we go back, please? Back, please. Don't. Oh, the other one. Okay, sorry. Philippians 3.12. Okay, Forward na lang. He was saying he was apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now, if you can remember the word apprehended, it's the Greek word kata lam bano. Say with me kata. It means downward movement. Like what you do in wrestling. It's kata, you know. And then the other word is lambano. The lambano means to take hold, to grab. 
And so when he said that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus, you know what he was saying? That when this happened to him, when he fell from his horse, the Lord Jesus apprehended him. In other words, he was saying, when I got saved, Jesus Christ seized me. When I got saved, Jesus Christ conquered me. He tackled me. He took me down. He, he fully mastered me and made me his own. In other words, kabalugid siya. He was really, truly born again. Because Jesus Christ apprehended him, took him, seized him, and saved him. See that? Furthermore, we know that he was truly saved because in Acts chapter 9, verse 6, it says that Saul was trembling. You can imagine he was trembling. Now, I've seen this many times. When people receive the Lord, sometimes they do have some physical reaction. They tremble. Sometimes they fall. May mga genuine, may mga fake man. You know, especially if you try to push people. We don't do that here. But the genuine ones, sometimes when they receive Jesus, they just fall. And sometimes there's a physical reaction. Why? Now, let's go back in the case of the Apostle Paul. You cannot imagine God, the tree on God, through the Holy Spirit, entering the life of the Apostle Paul. All the goodness of God. All the grace of God. All the kindness of God. All the beauty of God through the Holy Spirit is now entering the physical life of the Apostle Paul. Pushing darkness away. All the hatred of the Apostle Paul. Everything that was evil in the life of the Apostle Paul was being pushed out by God. That is why your physical body sometimes cannot take it. You tremble. Or you fall, see? Or you fall, and this is what happened to him. Everything that consumed soul was pushed out by God. Wow. There was a divine transaction going on, taking place in his life. Everything was going on in his mind, in his spirit, in his soul, that he cannot fully appre- I mean, comprehend it. It's hard, it's hard. And that's why probably the Lord has to put him in three days without sight. And that's why he cannot eat and he cannot drink because so much has been going on there. And if you can remember what I said last Sunday, all that God is and all that God possesses was being infused into the life of the Apostle Paul. And the same thing with you if you have fully surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is already in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen? You believe that? The mind of Christ is already in you through the Holy Spirit. You believe that? And the blueprint of the will of God is already in you through the Holy Spirit. As far as knowing the will of God for your life, It's already there. And all we have to do is to be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And all we need to do is to obey God. And along the way in this journey, things will unfold. Things will slowly unfold. Just like what happened to the Apostle Paul. It is happening to you. Probably it already happened to you. You have already invited Jesus into your life and you have experienced this. And you have been a Christian for X number of years. For some, maybe you are already aware about God's plan for you. And for some, you are not yet aware. Siguro ang kulang ng gid is more obedience to the Holy Spirit. Remember, He has already deposited in you the complete, say with me, complete, complete what? Spiritual DNA of God in you. Whether you believe that or not, It's there. It's already there in you because you have the Holy Spirit. 
Wow. But again, can you understand this? For now, you're saying, I don't know how it works. That is why I take it one day at a time. One day at a time. One thing for sure, in your spirit, kabaluka, something happened to you. Amen? But understanding all of this sometimes takes time. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with the people that you minister. Give them time and pray for them and let them understand. Now, again, Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Let me read that. It's very important to see this now. Oh, sorry. Because unless you have this understanding, you might get disappointed, you might get frustrated that you have been a Christian for so long. In verse 9, chapter 9, verse 9, I like it. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. Three days, he cannot see, he cannot eat, he cannot drink. Why? Same thing. God gave Paul three days of pause, I guess, to process everything. You can imagine, <laughs> he was Paul, and then this is God's instruction for him. He was saying, this must be a mistake. I hate those guys. I want to kill them. But now God wants me to minister to them. This is crazy. And so the Lord said, okay, sit down there for three days. And so because of that, probably he cannot eat and he cannot drink. And of course, he cannot see with all the metamorphic changes taking place in his life. See that? And here's the goodness of the Lord. If this happens to us, and it happened to me several times, because when you hear something from the Lord sometimes, through the reading or sometimes an impression to you, So in the case of the Apostle Paul, God sent a man by the name of Ananias to tell him exactly what the Lord told him three days before. Parang sigurado-gid, nga sigurado nga it came from the Lord. In Acts chapter 26, Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and to whom now I send thee. So very, very clear that ang iya a primary purpose was to witness to the Gentiles. Okay, So that was his primary call. In Acts chapter 9, verse 15, God sent Ananias to make the confirmation that this is true. But the Lord said unto him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles. Number one, Gentiles. Number two, kings. And number three, children of Israel. You know what happened? Very clear, huh? Claro na for Paul. Number one, Gentiles. Number two, the governing official, the kings, I need to witness to them. And number three, okay, the Jews. Claro, 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 gudya. You know what happened after that? Instead of going to the Gentiles, you know where Paul went? He went to the Jews. Where? In Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem. Why? Because Jerusalem was predominantly... Jews. Remember, he was also a Jew. In fact, he was a Pharisee and he was a rabbi. And so he was so used and very comfortable to be with his own people. He worked with them. He lived with them. He knows everything about them. And so he said, I would rather be comfortable with my people. But the instruction of the Lord was to go to the Gentiles. But you're supposed to be here to the Gentile now. He said, no, no, this is crazy. I will go to the Jews, my own people. And he did. And we are going to find out next week a series and series of opposition that he met. Because the Lord wanted him there, but he wanted it here. This is where he gets comfortable. You see that? Because the plan of God was to equip and prepare the Apostle Paul. Do you think Paul will grow here as he will continue to his own people? The answer is no. 
You don't usually grow when you are comfortable. Sad to say. Sino may mga apo? They have what they call growth spurts. Do you know that? Growth spurt. There will be a time that your apo will have to grow. And, you know, it takes all the ligaments and all the bones to adjust. And it is not comfortable for your apo. That is why they get fever. They're uncomfortable. You don't understand where they're crying. They call it growth spurts. You see? The same thing with ministry. Most of the time, we think we just want to be among those people that we are comfortable. And if you have been there for quite some time, no problem. But you, ha- you need to listen. If you are no longer growing, and these people are no longer growing because you are too comfortable, you have to do something. You have to do something about it. You are no longer being equipped for greater things. I mean, this has been going on for years and years and years. You cannot just stay where you are. You know what happened? Paul did this for five years. And so he met opposition and opposition. And the more that he tried doing this, later on they really wanted to kill him now. And so the local believers here, of course, these were Jews who became believers in the Lord. They were saved by the Holy Spirit. They were sealed by the Holy Spirit. But somehow, because of their mindset, they were still Jews. Because of their background, they still have all the issues and debating about circumcision and the law. It's almost like, wow. Yes, they are Christians, but damo pa mga mindset nila is very much Jewish. And the Lord said, you transfer. And finally, he gave up. And he finally said, oh boy, I'm giving up on you guys. And he transferred here. And the first place that he transferred, which is about 300 miles away, is Antioch. Say with me, Antioch. Because this is the place where Paul was prepared and equipped by God. It was not comfortable. You know why? This church was very unique. The church was a combination of Jews and Gentiles. And in this church, these people, Jews and Gentiles, they love each other. Jews and Gentiles, they worship together. And so, when Paul came here, finally he saw the vision of God for the body of Christ. This is what it is. That there is neither Jew or Greek, born or free, We can all be one in crisis. That's what he said in in Galatians. And so it was in this place that the Lord prepared him to take away the biases, to take away the prejudices against the Gentiles. He started to love the Gentiles. Do you think it will happen here? The answer is, no way. If he continued to be here, he will never grow. He will never be prepared. He will never be equipped for a bigger ministry. And that's exactly what happened to him. You see how God works? You see how important it is to listen to God and to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit? You know, that's just a problem sometimes. The Lord has given us an assignment, but we want something more comfortable. It is not always comfortable in God's will. Because that is where you grow. This is where you learn. Come on, let's be honest. In your comfort zone, are you learning how to pray? Sometimes you don't. Because everything is okay. But when everything is not okay, this is where you learn how to pray. You see that? So be very careful. If you are in your group or in the right place, you're in the right, even in the church. If wherever you are now and you think you're just too comfortable and nothing is happening, you just have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because God is going to do wonders for you and God is going to prepare you for a greater ministry. Amen? 
So remember this. It was in Antioch that Paul understood that there's neither Jew or Greek, bond or free, male or female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. So we can say that Antioch was the beginning of new beginnings for the Apostle Paul. Boy, it was in this place that he was fully equipped. So I want you to pray to the Lord and listen. Ano get ang gusto sa ginoo sa mo? Diin nga lugar. Are you getting too comfortable in your group that nothing is happening? Or are you being challenged by the Lord to do more missional work and reach out to other people? They still need to listen to the Word of God. In other words, by this time, Tane, in your comfort zone, people are already equipped and you should be doing something now for the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. So the challenge is this. As we get to know the will of God, what are we going to do? Trust and obey. Are we going to understand everything at once? The answer is no. So we should be giving time to ourselves. But the most important thing is to ask, where are you now in the will of God? In your comfort zone or in the most uncomfortable zone? But the most important is that you are growing in the Lord. Amen? I would like to ask Brother Jim Boy. Brother Jim Boy, can we sing that song again? I love that song. Just to remind us that all of us we all have a destiny. Can we sing together with them? Can we all rise, please? Sing with us. I have a destiny I know I shall fulfill. I have a destiny on the city on a hill. I have a destiny and it's not an empty wish for I know I was born for such a time as this. Sing it again. I have a destiny. I have a destiny. I know I shall fulfill. Claim it. I have a destiny in the sea on a hill. I have a destiny. It's not an empty wish, for I know I was born for such a time as this. Long before the ages, you be destined me to walk in all the works you have prepared for me. I have a 
destiny, just claim it. I have a destiny. Hallelujah. Oh, I shall fulfill it. Father, we know that we do have a destiny. And so for those, dear God, who are still seeking your will upon their lives, Lord, give them the grace that they can discover it, that they can join you in this journey, dear God. And Lord, even the pauses that you are giving into our lives, give us sensitivity to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that we may understand we might be too much in our comfort zone now, that we may need to move forward beyond so that we can be equipped more, so that we can be prepared more for a greater ministry. Oh God, bless your people now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.